Want to learn how to make a massive campfire in under five minutes with just one match? Well, you're in the right place. Let's go. Hey, what's going on? Rob Roy here with another great video coming your way. Huge thanks to my cousin Ben for today's video and taking the time out of his busy schedule for showing me the ropes on this one. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button with notifications turned on so you never miss a beat. This video was actually recorded as part of a longer fire tutorial series where Ben and I talked about three different types of fires to make at a campground with just one match. However, this one I'm about to show you right now was my favorite of the three because you can make a really impressive campfire with no added propellants and it looks awesome. Enough from me, let's get right to it. So the idea is once you have it built, you come in the inside and you can take this as high as you want. You can have this make your base wider and slowly pyramid it in as depending on how much material you have. Obviously the bigger it is, the more heat you'll have, bigger the fire. But if you want to conserve your material, you only want to go up three or four layers, that's fine. Obviously we have the luxury of nice split wood here, but you can do this in almost any environment. The idea is still the same. What you do is you build it up in this square pattern and alternate it back and forth until you get to the top and slowly start closing it in. That's very important. And notice how on the inside, you want to put all these small edges here, because this is what's going to catch first on the fire. All your corners and things, you don't want to put bark necessarily. Some of it's okay, but you want to put as little bark as possible on the inside because the bark takes longer to burn through, believe it or not, unless it's shredded down and very, very dry. Then what you want to do is you find all these little things that you found while you were splitting your wood and preparing your ground, more sticks, anything you possibly can to stuff inside of here, do it. This is actually a great example. See here inside this bark? This is why your bark doesn't catch. Because when a tree gets wet, these little fibers in here that actually that feed the trees, they hold water really well to keep them alive, but it also works against you for a fire. So a lot of people go right for bark, and that's not always your best answer. But you want to get as much of this stuff as possible, just stack that whole thing full. And then you always leave a entrance point right about here. You kind of move your things aside. You'll see you can reach all the way to the bottom. You take your match, you reach in and light that, and then it burns from the inside out. As soon as that thing lights, you take your logs and restack it and cover over this top. A little counterintuitive. You'd think you want the fire to be able to breathe and stuff, but believe it or not, it can, because it's pulling air from all of these little corners. Every hole you see, it's pulling air from. And when it lights, the fire can't escape through the top. Ener fire is always energy, so it has to go somewhere. So every time this thing goes, it's coming out in holes all over the place, which means that 10, 12 foot radius, everyone's nice and warm. It works just like a house, a house chimney. You look at the thing, the old fireplaces inside of a house, the house is enclosed, the fire has to breathe somehow. So it breathes through these little air pockets. And if you want to, while you're still kind of nursing it, you can take off one or two of these logs. But actually a lot of air is not good for fires because it's pulling from everywhere. What you want to do for a fire is pull it in from a certain specific area. Just like how you see people, you know, they blow on fires for a reason because that's forced air. So what you want to do is restrict the air and force it into these little holes. That way it pulls into very certain spots. Okay, so here we have it built. We showed you guys how to build it earlier. Uh, we, we worked some things around. Uh, what you want to see also is that sometimes you can switch it to more of a triangular formation at the top, anything to get that form nice and tight. So Robert, you see anything that is different from what you've done before? Yeah, dude, this is almost exactly the way we did it a few months back. But what blew, blew my mind with this is that it just literally one match. If you get, as long as you got your base, your foundation set, it, 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 it's good to go. And it's kind of counterintuitive because you look at this as somebody who's not familiar with the setup and you're like, this is a lot of big wood for one little match. Obviously, you know, survival situations start with small as possible. Absolutely. But this kind of blows your mind because you don't realize that that's actually happening inside the fire. Uh, inside the base, I should say. So he's gonna go ahead and light it with a match. Uh, goal between three and a half and five minutes. See if we can get this thing lit with one match. And it's a, not only lit, but like a raging, really healthy fire. It kind of blew me away the first time. So yep. here we go. So we, it's one match technically, but it doesn't mean you can't stoke it. So you wanna make sure you have your a little access point and have small sticks and stuff nearby. Cause you wanna light it once, but you do have to keep an eye on your fires. You gotta nurture them, it's like a little pet. So you gotta make sure they stay alive on you. All right, so here we go. Okay, so we got the grass burning in. Grass can be a little tricky. Sometimes it goes up really fast, other times it stays way down on you. So we're gonna see what we get today. Okay. 
one of my big takeaways from this last time, the first time I saw it was the tremendous amount of smoke that's get, that, that, that comes up right away. Obviously because not a lot of oxygen coming in like we used to seeing, but in, a, in essence, it's actually a good thing because it's keeping the heat inside this foundation and allowing just enough oxygen to come in to fuel the fire, but it really stays smoky until it kind of starts burning through the top, in which case the smoke kind of goes away, but pretty impressive nonetheless. A lot of people want to blow on a fire right away, and sometimes that's good for a little bit of extra boost, but you want to be careful because what happens is, is that if you blow on it, 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 the fire goes up really quick, and then it chars what's around it. So sometimes it's good, it's kind of like using starting fluid on like a small motor, like sometimes it gets you over a hump, but it doesn't address the real problem. You really want to counter your instinct and let it go on its own. Because that's the best way to build. If you blow on it, it can char what's around it and then it has a harder time relighting it. Get that timer going? Yep. All ready to go. So we have our timer obviously, but you can double check on the video how long that's going to be taking. But right now we just kind of want to let it do its thing. You hear that crackling and the pops and the little smoke? That's all very, very good signs. Hopefully we can keep it that way. Actually, what I said about stoking is very, very important because that fire about 30 seconds ago when we were lighting it, it was about to go out and I grabbed one piece of grass to bridge it from where the fire was to where it needs to go and it was just enough to take it where it needed to be. So you want to keep a really close eye on what the fire's doing. All those little pops are very, very good. It's working. So we're not actually touching this log structure yet. That's not what's even burning. This is just preparing the ground for what's gonna light next. So right now, this whole structure right here is just kind of holding it in and it's starting to pull. You see little flames starting to come out the top and you can see through all these little windows. But it's restricting your oxygen access to these points around. We have a small breeze, but it's not that windy out today. But it's really pulling everything in. That's what you want. So at this time, you find any little sticks, great time having anybody with you to help you have them bring sticks to you put them on the inside it can only help and now you're just bridging the gap between your original fire that little guy in the middle these bigger logs on the outside and you have such a large surface area on the inside of this whole structure that's burning it's a ton of heat that just gets put out at all times with grass now we're graduating to slightly larger sticks and that's what you want because although the fire's going it's never on its own completely until you have a cold base point you can walk away I as somebody who's passionate about building fires never walks away because I like seeing the process at this point you should be able to let it go 
take your, your logs, seal up that top. You leave a little bit for breathing, but then let that air or keep this restricted down. That way it's all forced to go out the sides. And what you'll see, hopefully we'll bring your video back as this thing is rolling. You'll see the fire shooting out of all these ports. And at night, it's really, really cool. And now this will burn for about four to six hours, depending on conditions, without being touched. You won't have to touch this at all. Because as these guys burn, these guys will burn up first, they start to collapse on the inside and gravity pulls this guy in. And you're good. You can let that sit for a very long time. You can start to see how it's starting to come out these little windows and all that good stuff. It blows my mind every time is just how big these logs are. Yep. Considering we started with a match. Biggest thing is how you stack them is where you keep, all these logs might be big, but they all have fine points. And that's where the fire has to enter. See how these little edges are burning up first? Right. That's where they start. And just try to have your hand over that work timer. I love the way you show up that way. All right, guys, thanks for watching. As we see here, we showed you how to build one of the hottest, biggest fires quickly. Uh, you can see that it's gonna cruise right at this point for a few more hours with very little maintenance. You wanna just keep an eye on it. Obviously, don't leave your fires unattended, uh, but it's pretty self-explanatory and, and maintains itself. So that's that, it's a great way to get a lot of heat out to a lot of people very quickly. Yeah, no, anyway, that was a big thanks to my cousin Ben for showing us the ropes. This is one of my absolute favorite fires to make. It requires a ton of wood and prep, but if you can supply the, the appropriate amount of fuel, it's one heck of a fire to watch. It gets really hot, really big, really fast, and it really makes for a nice you know, thing to do at a campsite if you got the wood there or back home in the backyard uh, because it just kind of blows people's minds about how big a fire can get. So big thanks to Ben, and uh, thanks again for checking out the video. If you like what you see here, you can hit subscribe or hit the thumbs up to follow the channel. And also we've got a really awesome podcast called Adventure Bound where you can follow myself interviewing all kinds of adventurous and outdoorsy people getting after the outdoor space. So again, thanks for checking it out and I uh, hope you enjoyed everything. Take care. Stay wild. See ya. See you guys.